Okay, I've got the Reliance water heater that I did a tune-up kit on. Included the both thermostats and the two elements. I uh, went ahead and shut the power off to the unit. Now you've got the cold inlet, which I've shut off. Then you've got the hot water exit, which I've left open. I went and drained the hot water lines from the lowest point faucet that I had. Once that was done, I went ahead and shut that off. So I've got basically a closed water heater. It's just the unit right there. Picked it up at one of the local big box home improvement stores for about 30 bucks. Uh, those are the two access covers there. We're going to go ahead and take those off. And that just gives us access to everything. Like I said, I've shut the water off, shut the power off to them. She did check and verify that the power was off with a uh, multimeter. Top and bottom panels out. Uh, the insulation there, I'll end up pulling that off. And once that insulation is out, that gives us access to all the electronic components and the actual heating elements themselves. We've got the lower one right there. Pull that insulation out. And I'm trying to be relatively careful just because it's old fiberglass insulation and anybody that's worked with that knows how it can get. The little plastic covers there, those just pop off. There you go. And it's the same thing for the upper heating element and thermostat. A little better look at it there. The square part, that's the actual lower thermostat, the round thing on towards the bottom. That's the element. And there's the upper. Pull that insulation out of there. And we'll pop that plastic off. That red button there, that's the high limit switch. That's the one that was giving me issues. Kept popping. So there was something wrong internally with that thermostat or one of the thermostats. Get the high limit switch and then you get the little adjustable thermostat and there's your element, top element. And there's just the specs on it, just a 50 gallon electric water heater, 4,500 watt uh, elements. And those all came in the kit. Now here I do is my uh, take a picture or make a diagram of something so that you know where everything goes just in case you get screwed up or in case you take a wire off somewhere that you can't remember where it goes. Basic tools for this are pretty simple. You just need a couple screwdrivers and uh, element socket. Definitely worth the 10 bucks I think I paid for the element socket. I think they're pretty much a universal size. If not, that socket fits everything that I've ever done with them. The kit opened up here. Oh, find myself. Again, if you don't have any idea what you're doing, please don't even attempt this. This is just how I did it. I'm not trying to give anybody advice on how to do this because you're working with 240 volts and power. Your normal outlet's a 110. This is a 240. There's both of the elements. They're the same. 240 volt, 4,500 watt dual elements. There's two O-rings that come with the kit. Those have to be put on there and you gotta make sure that you get the old O-rings off when you replace them. You'll see on the top one, when I replace the top one, 
it actually the old o-ring was actually stuck on there and i had to lose a little bit of water out of there trying to get it out but there's the o-ring on there My little Australian shepherd down there. She's got to get in on the action. And we'll just disconnect everything. Take that one off the element. There's two leads on each element. Pull those off. I did put a couple towels down just because I did not drain the tank. I do these without draining the tank because all the sediment that's in the bottom can get in there and clog up that uh, spigot and you'll never get the thing shut off again. So I broke that one free. Came out relatively easy. And you'll see some of the water coming out, but like I said, that little bit of water that spills out of there since we've depressurized it and everything, it's just draining out. That little bit of water is nowhere near the pain that you got to deal with if you can't get that drain all shit back off. So just tighten it up pan tight. And then we'll give it just a little another eighth or quarter of a turn. They don't have to be super tight. You've got it. They don't have to be torqued down to where they're going to break off or anything, so... That's the old element covered with calcium and whatnot. Yeah, I'll just clean up that little bit, get some of that water picked up. And we'll give her a, just a little twist to tighten her down there. They don't need to be in super tight. Now that bottom thermostat there, those just slip out of that little carrier they've got. Uh, two wires on them, and then they've just got the little carrier. It's also got the temp gauge or the temp control on there. Yeah. Just pop that out of there. Just gotta pull the little tabs and it'll pop out. And both of those come with the kit, the new top, new top and the new lower. I've replaced them singly before, but for 30 bucks, you might as well do the whole thing. Okay, and we'll just get this one replaced. It's just a matter of swapping the wires out one for one, basically. There you go. Put that one back in there, and then we'll hook up the other leads to it. Sorry, some of this stuff is not right in frame. It's hard to 
work by yourself and try to record things by yourself, not knowing if it's in frame or not. But we'll clean that off a little bit. Then we'll just pop that back in. You want that nice and clean because that's got the thermostat on the back of it, so it knows when to shut itself off. But they just pop back into that carrier. The replacement one's popped in just fine. I'm just making sure there's no leaks down there or anything else when I'm down there. And she's all dry, so she's good. And we'll just connect those two back on there. Again, if you don't have the right tools, you don't have any idea of what you're doing with this stuff, just don't. Call somebody, call a professional, unlike myself. I just didn't have anything better to do on a random Sunday. And I'm just trying to get the right angle on it. That wire just didn't want to swoop in there right so I had to bend it just a little bit just to get it to fit in where I wanted it. Screws don't need to be tightened down super tight either. I mean get them down snug and tight but you don't have to bust them off. And we'll move up to the top one. Basically it's the same thing, just a couple more wires. And I did replace the elements first because if I would have busted one of those off or wasn't able to get into there to get them out, if they would have been seized in there, that would have probably been the end of the project. So, but once I got those out and switched, I knew the other stuff would be easy. So, or would come off easy. And just give those a nice turn to get them broke free. That one came out really easy. Like I said, they don't have to be in there super tight, just enough so they're not leaking. You got a rubber gasket there, so. Once that gets compressed, they should seal up. Tuck the towel down in, try to keep some of the water from getting everywhere. And this is the one that you'll see when I pull this out of here. Part of the gasket of the old one stays in the heater. So I had to pull that element out a couple times to get that off there. And it looks like way more water's coming out than what actually is. Now that gasket's still in there from the old one. So she's not running in right. And there, I just checked it and didn't see it on the element. So I knew it was still in the... And just worked it around a little bit and finally she came loose and pop her off here. And once the old one's out, she turned in just the way just the way it was supposed to. Again, just 
hand tight and then gave it a little crank afterwards. And then cleaned up a little bit and hooked my wires back up the same way on the elements. As far as the upper thermostat goes, a couple different ways that I could see doing it is taking all the wires off at once, popping it in, and then hooking the wires back up. And that's where your diagram would come in handy. The way I did it here, I just popped the two mains off, that red and that black on the top above that red switch, that red button. And then pop those two off, replace them. And as I take each one off, the old thermostat, I put it onto the new one in the same spot. Either way, teach his own, however you want to do it, as long as you don't mess any of the wiring up. Get those snugged up. And they're not an exact match, but obviously all the terminals are the same. Take the main black wire out, and then we'll pull the main red wire out and start with those. And just remember, before you fire this thing back up, make sure that you've got it full of water and go ahead and refill your lines and stuff before you even turn the power back on because you do not want that element heating up without any water surrounding it. So once you get all the electrical done before you turn the juice back on, Make sure you open up your water valves, get the water flowing through that heater again, and make sure it's fully, fully full before you crank that thing up. And then afterwards you can adjust your hot water temps I think all in all, it took about an hour. I know the video is only about 25 minutes, but by the time I got everything ready and tools and everything that you don't see on camera as far as refilling the tank after you're done and 
making sure all the lines, I actually go to all the faucets in the house and run the hot water just to get any of the hot or the air out of the lines. I tell you what, for 30 bucks though, you can't beat it. And just double checking to make sure they're all tight. Don't want any of those slipping out, causing any kind of issues. And we'll just pop that old one out of there. I probably should have taken the old one out and then put the new one in and then connected the lines because it gets kind of, those wires are actually a fairly heavy gauge, so they're pretty stiff to work with, but just kind of got to work them around a little bit, as you'll see. Get her to pop back in there. Yeah, if I had put it in before I hooked everything up, the struggle wouldn't have been so real, but. I'm just trying to get everything in there so that it sits nice and tight against the tank. Because that's where you've got the thermostat on is the back side of that. So you want it nice and tight to the tank so it is able to read the temp. Once you repressurize that thing, remember to check for leaks too. Check around your elements, make sure that they're not weeping or anything's coming out of there. There you go. There she's all connected. No leaks on the bottom of that one. Nice and dry. The water heater is at least 10 years old, if not closer to 15. No leaks there. Everything's dry there. And now we're going to go ahead and open up the valves and actually before I even hit the turn the power